It's hard for most people, it really is. When I took college algebra long ago, I did pretty well in the class. I remember I sat in the back of the class and there was this kid, he was like 16 and I was 24. And he would run circles around me. But I didn't let it bother me. I knew that he was still in high school, he was fresh. It had been a long time since I had seen mathematics. So naturally it took me longer. And that's what I would tell myself. I would tell myself, it's been a while since I've done math, so I need to slowly come back to it. And I think that was a good attitude because I didn't feel defeated because he knew so much more than me. And then we got to the end of the course and everything changed. There was a topic in that course, in that college algebra course, that I couldn't get. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get it. I, I would go home, I would sit at the kitchen table, and it just didn't make sense. And because of that, because of that topic, I didn't get an A in college algebra. I ended up with a B. It was my first B in college, college algebra, which is kind of crazy because fast forward years later, I've taught dozens of college algebra classes in college. So it's kind of funny. And the funny thing is, what's even more interesting is that teaching college algebra, I have found that semester after semester, it has always been the hardest subject for people. And it's logarithms. For some reason, when people get to logarithms, they just, they just fall apart. And looking back on like my past self, you know, my student self, I don't know why I didn't get it. I can't look back and say, oh, that's why I didn't understand. Because now I understand and it all makes sense and it's all very easy. <laughs> that's how it is with mathematics a lot of times. Like if you don't get it, it seems impossible. And then once you understand, then it's easy. So if you're struggling with logarithms, just know that. Or if you're struggling with anything in mathematics, just know that there will come a day when you will get it. So this is a book I have here. We're going to do a problem from this book. This is a really good book. It's actually a book called Algebra and Trigonometry. This is the instructor's edition. It's by Michael Sullivan. And this book is used in colleges in the U.S. typically for pre-calculus and for trigonometry. It's typically not used for college algebra, but it has more challenging problems in it. So I thought, let's do a problem from this book that's a little bit different, one that you might not see in college algebra unless your college algebra class is a little bit extra hard. And the problem itself just looks hard. It's actually not that hard, it just looks hard. But yeah, and hopefully after watching this video, maybe you can learn a little bit of mathematics. Okay, let's go ahead and jump to it and do some mathematics. Just really briefly, I'll show you the contents of this book in case you are interested in this book because it's a great book for self-study. It's a great book for anyone who wants to learn algebra, trig, or both. And again, you can use this to learn algebra, trig, and it's typically used in the US to um, teach pre-calculus and trig. Michael Sullivan, Chicago State University. Very standard topics, equations and inequalities, graphs, functions in their graphs. And again, this is the instructor's edition. I actually got this used. I didn't get it because I've taught in the past. I got it because I bought it online and it happened to be the instructor's edition. So all of this stuff here is taught in a college algebra class typically. So is this, although it's taught again in pre-calc. And then trig, this is where trig starts, by the way. So if you were taking a trig course, you would start here at trig functions, chapter seven. And then you would keep going and you do all of this stuff, seven through 10. 11, this is usually taught in a pre-calculus course. It's like conic sections and stuff. This is typically taught in an algebra course, pre-calculus, pre-calculus sometimes. So that's the whole book. And let's go ahead and do a problem from this book. So this is the problem. It's an equation with two logarithms and the logarithms have a fractional base. So we have the log base one third of x squared plus x minus the log base one third of x squared minus x equals to negative one. So to do this problem, we're first gonna start by combining these logarithms using something called the quotient rule. The quotient rule says if you have the log base b of, let's say, m, 
minus the log base b of, say, n, whenever you subtract, it turns into a fraction. So the subtraction turns into a fraction. So you have log base b of m over n. And in all of this, m and n must be positive because the logarithmic function only allows positive numbers in its domain. So in our particular case, this is our m and this is our n. So in the very first step, we're just gonna take this equation and combine it, uh, these two th terms and combine it into one term. So this is log base one third of m, so the first piece, x squared plus x, over x squared minus x, and that's equal to negative one. Let's go ahead and do some simplification here inside this piece. This is called the argument of the logarithm, this inside piece. You probably noticed that we can pull out an x. So we have log base one third of, let's factor out an x from the numerator. So there'll be x parentheses x plus one over, and then we can do the same thing in the denominator, x parentheses x minus one. And that's equal to negative one. We can cancel the x's, assuming they're not zero, and x can't be zero anyways, right? Because if x were zero, you get the log of zero. And as we said earlier, the log function doesn't have any negative numbers or zero uh, in its domain. Only positive numbers are allowed in the domain of log. In fact, the domain of log is all the positive numbers. So you just basically can't plug in zero or a negative number into the log function. Let's rewrite this. This is the log base one third of x plus one over x minus one. And that's equal to negative one. So now we have to get rid of the log. And actually, this is something that I didn't know when I was a student, how to get rid of the log. So we have a single log on one side and a number on the other side. So there is a formula. It says that if you have b to the log base b of x, you get x. This formula stems from the fact that the exponential function and the logarithmic function are inverse functions. This is actually the composition of those functions, and it's equal to x because they're inverse functions. In any case, it's a formula you want to memorize. So you notice here b is the base, the base here is one third. So what we do is we put a one third here and we put a one third here. This process of putting the base on both sides like this, is called exponentiation. We're exponentiating both sides, basically. That's what we're doing, we're exponentiating both sides. So now, you see how the log here cancels with the b basically? Same thing here. So you have x plus one over x minus one. So we exponentiated both sides. One third to the negative one. Now one third to the negative one is just three, okay? If you don't understand that, I'll do it over here. There's a bunch of different ways to show it. One third to the negative one is one over one third. So that's one divided by one third. When you divide, you multiply by the reciprocal. So it's one times three over one, which is just three. So we have x plus one over x minus 1 equals 3. I can smell the book from here. I just have to give it a whiff. Ah, oh, smells so good. My copy smells amazing. I love the smell of textbooks. Okay, so to continue solving for this, for x, we have to get rid of this fraction. So there's an x minus 1 here. So we can multiply both sides by x minus 1. These go away. So we have x plus 1 equals, distribute the 3 here, 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And we're looking for x. Let's just put all the x's on one side. So I'll subtract x, subtract x. So that's going to give us 1 equals 2x minus 3. Plus 3, plus 3. Gives us 4 equals 2x. And then finally, to solve for x here, since it's being multiplied by 2, we just divide by 2. So x is 2. But we're not done. Whenever you have one of these problems, it's really important to check your answer. So let's go ahead and check our answer here. So the original equation was, I have a little bit of room here, I'll make it work. Log base one third of x squared plus x minus log base one third of x squared minus x, and that's equal to negative one. Let me zoom in here so you can see it. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna plug in two, because two is our possible answer, into the original equation. So it's log base one third 2 squared is 4, so it's 4 plus 2 minus log base 1 third of 2 squared is 4, so 4 minus 2, and that's equal to negative 1.
It's log base one-third of six minus log base one-third of two, and that's equal to negative one. Now we use that quotient rule we talked about earlier. So the fraction turns into, the subtraction turns into a fraction, so log base one-third of six over two is equal to negative one. So log base one-third of three is equal to negative one. And you can check this using the definition. How do you rewrite this? Another way to rewrite it other than exponentiating both sides, which we could do, we could exponentiate, but another way to do it is to say one-third to the negative one is equal to three. One-third to the negative one is equal to three. So three is equal to three, so it checks. If you don't like that, because that's a little bit harder, you can exponentiate both sides. Let's do it over here. If we have log base one-third of three, negative one, if you want to check it, exponentiate both sides. Put a one-third here, put a one-third here. If these go away, you just get three equals one-third to the negative one. And we already established that that's three. So three is equal to three, so all is good. So the answer is actually two. So logarithms cause a lot of pain and grief uh, for people. It caused me a lot of pain and grief, and it was pretty much the reason that I didn't get an A in college algebra. So if you're feeling like you're struggling with logarithms, hopefully this video um, has been helpful, and hopefully some of this made sense. I'm curious, when you took algebra, what was the hardest thing uh, that you thought? What was like the hardest thing for you in algebra, or was it all easy? Leave a comment below. Actually, if you want to learn algebra, I actually do have an algebra course. Um, it's on Udemy, but I have a website. It's mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com, but this redirects to freemathvids, but that's easier to remember, mathsorcerer.com. Go there, and I have a college algebra course as well as calculus courses, etc. They're not actually on this website. This website just has links, and those links take you to my Udemy courses on Udemy. And if you get the courses, please use my website uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's cheaper usually. I lowered the price to the bare minimum on all my courses. So pretty much I think they always should be on sale. Like you should get a really low price if you click the link on my website. So try that. I know Udemy has sales sometimes, but I think it's like a permanent sale. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, check it out. I've got algebra courses, calculus courses, differential equations courses, advanced calculus courses, an abstract algebra course, etc. I hope this video has been helpful. Oh, and thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you, and thank you to all my members. I appreciate your support. It allows me to continue making YouTube math videos and other related things. So, great book, by the way. It's a really good book. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description if I can find it. I don't know how expensive it is. I paid very little for this copy because this is a used copy, and you know, I didn't get it because I've taught in the past. That's not why I got it. I, I, I got it because um, I bought it online, and it happened to be the instructor's edition. So I was like, oh, that's cool. I've got the instructor's edition. But um, it, the regular edition is also really good. So, yeah, it's a good book. It's a really good book. And you can use this, again, to learn algebra and trig. And in the U.S., this book is not really used to teach college algebra. It's used to teach pre-calculus, which is, like, harder than college algebra, and trigonometry, which causes people a lot of problems as well. But... They're both beautiful courses, and you can learn a lot of mathematics with this book. There's a lot of math in this book. But yeah, I hope it's been helpful. Good luck. Take care and keep doing mathematics.